What's up everybody? This is your girl Mio should be one. And guys forgive me, I've been on here for a while. I have had a little cold. I've been having a little cold. It was not pretty at all. Um Yeah, so <laughs> let's begin the CSI gameplay. Uh, we're on episode two, so we're just starting off from where we left off the last time. So um Hope you all enjoy this gameplay. It's been that long. <laughs> okay. New game. Wow, we're in episode three already. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, we did because we did finish the last one. And we talked to the, the guy, the, the black guy did it, right? Las Vegas. Uh oh. That's Mary Marst, isn't it? The reputation preceded her, didn't it? Well, it isn't every day a spoiled heiress becomes the acting CEO of an international hotel conglomerate. That's true. The Marst Corporation. Mary was certainly Daddy's little girl. Well, this family has seen its share of tragedy recently. What is it, two years ago, Frank Marst and his wife Ellen died in a skiing accident over in Europe? Then Frank's will hands over the family business to Mary, only to have her nearly die in a car accident. She suffered second and third degree burns all over her body. I don't think she was expected to live, and that was over a year ago. Well, you gotta hand it to her. She always defied expectations. She was pretty tough. So tough, maybe someone just got tired of waiting. Maybe. We'll see, guys. Looks like foul play. Mary's hospice oh, nurse God. I hope to embarrass Honda like this. I'll let you guys go to work. If you need anything, you know where to find Uh oh. Okay, partner. Ready when you are. Let's do it. Uh, man, let's look at this body first. Look at her. Let's look at these burns. So once we've processed the scene, we'll call Robbins and arrange for the body to be transferred to the coroner's office. You get a better look at the body at autopsy. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. We'll go back out of there. Let's look and see if anything's tampered with around here. Have you ever seen one of these before? It's a device used with an IV to monitor a patient's dosage of medication. Yeah, I've, I've seen so one of those. It looks as though if Mary were experiencing some pain, she could just push this little button here, and the regulator would release a dose of morphine into mm -hmm. her IV. See this? There's a serial number right along the broken seam here. So if we put these pieces back together at the lab, we should be able to read it. Yep, I knew that. Okay, so I think we're good right there for now. Let's look at anything else. Uh oh, what's this on the floor? Shoe impressions? Left in mud. The mud's still moist. Fresh. Let's get that then, right? Take a picture of this. These muddy footprints have a very distinct tread. Alright, we're good so far. What are you taking a picture of, dude? Okay, nothing over there. <laughs> Why would they like... Well, I don't know. You just, you never can like be too sure about this game. You have to like make sure everything's been looked at and, and, and... Yeah. Can we look in here? Sweet. Oh, who's this? She looks so guilty. Like, it's not funny. We'll get to you in a few minutes. Really. More of them. We should compare these footprints to the ones we pulled from the next room. Sounds good. We are good detectives, or what? Like anyone you know? Uh. Maybe not. <laughs> this bust is of the late Frank Marst, Mary's father. Mm. Looks like it's made of solid bronze. Nothing to collect here. Nothing? Uh, what, what, um. Fingerprints then? 
No fingerprints here. No? Oh, I know, I know, I know. This stuff, the fluids. Oh, casting? A casting. No fluids here. Casting. Guys, I'm, I'm terrible. No I'm terrible at this, here. guys. Forgive me. <laughs> it's the casting. I, I thought so. We'll be able to compare those marks back to the lab. Okay, anything else? Gets here in a few minutes, lady. I'm trying to see if anything else has been tampered with around here. Anything else in the other room? It's a big house. I guess we can't go uh, back here. Ah, what's this? Nothing, I guess. It's just upstairs. Let's talk to this lady first, and then we'll uh, talk to the other. Excuse us, miss. Over at the Las Vegas Crime Lab, we'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Starting with your name, please. I'm Pauline Liu. I'm Mary's hospice nurse. But I suppose you might have been able to guess that from the uniform. Uh, yeah? That is, or was, the unit which regulated Mary's morphine dosage. The mobility in the two fingers on her left hand allowed her to press the button on the regulator. By breaking the regulator, there'd be no control over how much morphine Mary was receiving. There'd be no way to monitor it. If Mary pushed the button too often, then a small safety latch inside the regulator would engage. The latch blocks any further signals into the mechanism dispensing the morphine. It's what prevents an overdose. Yes. And Miss Barrett, that's Mary's stepsister. She and I found Mary. Like this. Um, about a quarter to eight, I think? Miss Barrett visits us every Sunday and she usually arrives by ten o'clock, but today she was early. She rang the bell about half past seven. Miss Barrett and I were together when we came into the room and found Mary, just like this. I was just <laughs> devastated. No, it's just not physically possible. Mary was burned over 75% of her body, and we're talking about burns which were second and third degree. The scar tissue is so extensive, her mobility had been limited to two fingers on her left hand. It's hard for me to say this, but I do believe Mary wanted to die. It's a miracle she survived the car accident, but the quality of her life from that moment on was extremely poor. It's difficult to imagine just how much physical pain she was in on a daily basis. We did as much as we could to ease that pain, but I know she's in a much better place now. Did she talk at all? No. The damage to her vocal cords was too severe. And she couldn't move enough to sign either. Miss Barrett once purchased a computer for Mary so she could literally talk through it. But even though you could operate the voice software with the touch of a button, Mary showed no interest in it. Are you familiar with the Nightingale Pledge? It's an oath nurses take. Like the Hippocratic Oath. Part of it goes, I will abstain from whatever is deleterious and mischievous and will not take or knowingly administer any harmful drug. So in answer to your question, no, I did not assist Mary in ending her life. I have a small room at the house. Family prefers I refer to it as the chalet. Anyway, when the family hired me, it was with the understanding that Mary required 24-hour care. Um, I can't remember Mary ever having a call button, actually. I used to just check in on her four or five times a night. 
But I stopped doing that a few months ago when the doctor was able to adjust the regulator to administer a dosage which allowed her to sleep peacefully through the night. I should have never have stopped checking in on her. Maybe I could have saved her. No, Mr. Barrett, uh, I mean John, Mary's brother, well, stepbrother, actually. I'm sorry, it's a little confusing. He lives in the chalet. He told me he moved in right after they decided to check Mary out of the hospital. She hadn't been expected to live very long, and they thought it would be nice for her to live out the rest of her days looking out over the waters of Lake Merritt. He spent a lot of time with her every day, talking to her, reading to her. They were very close. When we couldn't revive Mary, Mr. Barrett got very upset and left the house. I don't know. I took care of Mary, but I was not particularly close to the family. I tried to be as inconspicuous in their lives as possible. Yes, of course. Hey, you sure you're ready to get out of All here? Right, let's, let's just go to I her. I think of a couple things we haven't taken a look at yet. Why don't we make sure the scene's secure? We'll get a statement from each witness, and then we'll go from there. Miss Barrett, we're with the Lost Lake. All right, let's see. I know you're upset, but we'd like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Of course, officers. Whatever I can do to help. Mary's nurse let me in, and it was just like my normal Sunday visit. I wanted to tell Mary about my promotion. And then, as soon as I saw her, I knew something was wrong. I could tell by the paleness of her skin. I think I screamed. And the nurse screamed, and that's when John ran in, and we tried to revive her. This is the family's chalet. When we all decided to bring Mary back here to spend her final days in peace, my brother John decided to move in too, so he could be with her and help take care of her. He and Mary were very close. Much closer than he and I. No, we're not particularly close. Well, let's just say we have very different views about money. Very different values about it. Growing up as an only child, Mary had always wanted a little brother, and John was more than happy to be spoiled by her. I have no idea. He ran out of here, and I haven't seen him since. Yes, that's right. I'm sure you've heard of my stepfather. The self-proclaimed hotel tycoon. The bust is almost as imposing and impressive as the man himself. He and my mother died less than a year after it was commissioned. They were skiing in the Swiss Alps. I can tell you, everyone was shocked when the living will entrusted Mary to step in as the acting CEO of Mars Hotel and Entertainment. Well, needless to say, no one thought a party girl could take over the reins of a multinational travel and leisure conglomerate, including me. But I have to admit, we were all wrong. Tragically, the very same night she announced wow, her retirement sucks. and appointed her successor, she crashed her car. Yes, it is. She was so badly burned, the doctors told us she wouldn't live through the night. I will never forget the look on my brother's face when he heard the doctor say that. It's all impossibly difficult to describe to you. I mean, first our parents, and then Mary? It was almost too much to bear, but the way she fought... She was stronger than anyone could have guessed. She wanted to live. That's correct. Mary's nurse and I discovered the body this morning. 7.30 this morning? Maybe 7.45? I'm not exactly certain. Yes, she was lying almost exactly like this, but the nurse and my brother John did try resuscitating her, so the body may have been jostled a bit. 
I made sure none of us moved anything else because I understand the importance of not disturbing a crime scene. Her morphine regulator was smashed. Mary couldn't do that. Poor thing could only move two fingers on her left hand. God bless her. I pray she's in a better place now. You'd think anyone living like this would want to die. Not Mary. She was a fighter, and she was a real inspiration to me. When I moved away from here, I thought I'd never come back. But after Mary's accident, I started flying in from LA every Sunday. I swear to you, as God is my witness, Mary wanted to live. Yes, I live in Los Angeles. I work for a public relations firm. But like I said, I fly out to visit Mary That's every right. Sunday. Thank you for your time, Miss Barrett. Um, I'd like it if you could remain here in Las Vegas until so, we have a better uh, idea of what happened to your stepsister, okay? All right, officers. I Whatever think we can go best. now, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. You sure you're ready to get out of here? Because I can think. All right, let's look at some more things. Uh, I don't know what to look at. What did we miss? What did we miss? Did we miss anything? Anything? I know we checked here, guys, but we never can be too sure. Oh, yay, yay, yay. Okay, this, this area is fine. Let's see what the mailbox says, because it usually has good information on it. I didn't hear about a number of some kind of morphine regulator. You couldn't read it and regulate it in these pieces. How are you jigsaw puzzles? Alright, so let's look at the evidence and look and see if we can find anything on it. something together guys but I don't know what yet okay that's all we have in the evidence file so everything else has to be somewhere here. Yeah. A bottle of morphine. That's terrific. So there has to be a switch inside that yeah. regulator unit which prevents a patient mm -hmm. from overdosing. Bad for a preliminary assessment. What's next? What's next? I freak. I don't know. Uh. The body, and I'll make sure the officers hold the scene for us, just in case we need to come back here. Those footprints match up. Same tread, same size. So whoever passed by the bronze match bust of baby. Frank Marst also approached Mary Marst in her bed. Yep. 
So far, we're doing, you know, we're getting there. We got some information on this. So now that we found those two footprints are matched, we're going to um, check these fingerprints out. Let's go to DNA, baby. Well, no, I don't think it's DNA. No, it's DNA. It's, it's chemical because of the, the, I think, the mask that we found. No, I think it's not even in here. It has to be in the other and then, uh, it's this one over here. I always get those mixed up. Let's see who the DNA, who do you, who, who do you guys think it is? I think it's probably the sisters, no, I think it's probably the, the nurses, um, shoot, it could be the sisters too, but I think it's the nurse that, you know, fingerprints. Oh, we found some money. What do you guys think it is? Moment of truth. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it is either the sisters or the nurse. I hope those two are not in it. I really do. I, ah. So, the print on the bottle matches Jane Barrett. It says here she was arrested six months ago as part of a death with dignity demonstration in Carson City. She was arrested. Nice. We have a warrant available, baby. But before we do that, we want to um, see if we can... Wait, is it in here? No, not yet. I want to see if we can compare those... Um... Dang it, where the freak is it? Before we go to get the warrant from her, I want to see if we can find that max piece. Um, yeah, this thing. Oh, but we only have one, so we have to compare it. Well, we'll see. Maybe we can use it and see what happens. Mm, I guess we need some more evidence to back it up. Let's just go to get the, um, get the warrant from Brass. Based on what evidence? Prints on the bottle of morphine belong to Ms. Barrett? Well, until Doc Robbins gives us the results of the autopsy, we can't even think about a warrant. But maybe Ms. Barrett will come in here voluntarily to answer some more questions. No harm in asking her, right? <laughs> let's see. Oh, she came in. Well, let's just go... Well, let's Thank talk you to for her coming first. in voluntarily, Ms. Barrett. Of course, officers. I'm happy to help with your investigation. Uh-oh. Even though the family's resources are available to me, I have tried very hard to remain self-reliant. Truthfully, my only indulgence is using the family plane to fly back and forth for my Sunday visits. This is my first time flying commercially. It was more frustrating than I'd expected. It took about four hours in actual travel nice. time to get to Vegas. I mean, I could have just as easily driven here. But you don't really need to hear about any of this, right? Sorry. No, of course not. Mary had already passed by the time I got here. But your fingerprints were on it, sweetheart. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant today. I did change her morphine when it ran out during my visit last week. <laughs> that was good. That was a cover-up. Euthanasia? Well, it's one of those... In theory, it sounds like something which could be a good thing, but in practice, what scares me is the opportunity for abuse. Kids offing their grandparents in order to inherit the money to buy a new cell phone? No, I'm opposed to it. This, the evidence contradicts, contradicts her statement. Opposed to what? I mean, how, how is that? How, we just use that. We can't use that again. We used Ms. it. Miss Barrett, 
Are you aware that your fingerprints I, are on I, I record guess because can. you were arrested six months ago at a death with dignity demonstration in Carson City? I wish I could chalk that up to youthful indiscretion, but obviously I was old enough to know better. Suffice it to say, my politics six months ago had more to do with my personal relationships than my personal beliefs. I don't mean to suggest that there's anything wrong with the death with dignity people. It's just that I wasn't really with them, if you know what I mean. And honestly, having lived with Mary like this for all this time, I can't say I could make a decision like that. Especially because, even though she can't speak, I know Mary wants to live. I know that very much in my heart. Miss Barrett, could you tell us your whereabouts for the last 24 hours? <laughs> I live in Los Angeles. I come up here to visit with Mary once a week. I flew up here this morning. By that look on your face, I'd imagine you'd also like to know if anyone can verify what I'm saying, but I don't think anyone I know saw me. Oh, wait! Hold on. Actually, I have this excellent home security setup. Superior security systems. You see the way it works? You're either in the away setting with the motion detectors on, or the home setting with them off. They gave me an application for my cell phone that tracks when I'm home and when I'm away. I can send what it recorded for the last 24 hours to you, and you'll be able to see I was home right up until I left for my flight this morning. Okay. Send us those records, Ms. Sounds, sounds good. But we'll still have to authenticate them with your security company. Sounds good. So I just good. got the records for Jane Barrett's security system from Superior Security. Looks like they check out. According to the records, Ms. Barrett was at home last night at 11. You know, the Mars family is still a pretty powerful player in this state. And it's pretty much an open secret that John Barrett was set to inherit everything when Mary Marsh died. Jane Barrett wasn't even going to get a little something for the effort. Well, being left out of the will is a possible motive, but... Yeah? What do we think about Jane helping Mary end her own life? Trying to give her death with dignity? You know what death with dignity is? It means you don't drool. I think when you have a family with a lot of money to fight over, I don't trust any of them. Right. So Doc Robbins impressed. tells us the time of death clears Jane Barrett and I'll move on to the next best suspect, family member or not. Vault Insurance Company was only too happy to provide us with their claim file on Mary Marst's accident. Well, let's go, um... Okay, we'll take that, but let's go, um... Okay, we'll look at the video later, but let's go, um, check out the body. And then after that, we'll stop it from there. Hello again. Hi. Still working on your victim. But I can tell you her prelim tox came back with a toxic level of morphine. I should be finished with the autopsy pretty soon. I'll give you a call when I'm done. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. All right, guys, we're just going to stop it here. And we're going to save it. And uh, we have the video. Was this photo of... Security system of Mary. That I, oh, let's go to look at this video, and then we'll stop it after that. I think we've been playing this for a while now, for about a good 30 minutes, I think. Um, uh, we don't have the video. I thought we had the video. I guess we're not looking at anything. Um, yeah, guys, let's stop it here because. Uh, the other part's gonna be too long and I'm not gonna wanna stop. Okay, so let's just save it for now. And we shall come back next time. So, guys, thank you guys for joining me on this episode gameplay. It looks very interesting. It looks like it's gonna be really tons of fun so far. So this this case looks really, really exciting. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next gameplay.